And as we mentioned, BC is very close to rolling out the first COVID-19 vaccinations next week. But many are wondering when they can get it and if there are going to be any side effects. And joining us now live to answer your questions is our friend, infectious disease specialist, Dr. Srinivas Murthy. Nice to see you again, Dr. Murthy. Good evening, Mike. Lots of questions coming in, so let's get right uh, to them. Uh, here's one from a viewer asking, uh, does vaccination reduce the chance of infection or does it merely reduce the seriousness of symptoms? Oh, that's a great question. And we don't actually know if it reduces the chance of infection. We do know it reduces the chance of you having the disease, namely the symptoms of it. And that's what they looked for in those clinical trials, at least for the vaccine that's been approved right now in Canada. Um, ideally, it reduces the infection as well. And so you don't actually have the possibility of transmitting it to somebody else when you're asymptomatic. We think that's the case. And we'll see what happens as the vaccine rolls out to see if that's actually true. We do know it does reduce actually having the disease, namely the symptoms of COVID. Okay, so uh, that leads us to this one. How many people in BC, there's going to be a slow rollout plan as we know, but how many people in BC need to be vaccinated to provide an adequate level of protection so that things can start to get back to normal? Yeah, adequate is a tricky word there, Mike, and it's doing a lot of heavy lifting. It's difficult. Um, population immunity for this disease is not defined yet. We don't actually know what we need. Some diseases, you need very, very high levels of immunity to start bringing the curves down. Some diseases, you need much less. Um, and so I think we'll aim to vaccinate as many people as possible. And we'll start to see what the numbers are doing before we start to think that we're past the worst of things. I think obviously access to the vaccine will be the limiting factor more so than anything else. Okay, a uh, question on Twitter. Uh, can I ask, once you receive the vaccine, and I believe they're referencing the, uh, uh, the Pfizer vaccine, how long does it last? They say it's 95% effective against the virus, but uh, they don't say how long. Yeah, of course. And we don't actually know how long it will last. We do have data from the first people who got it back in the, say, spring, and it seems like immunity seems to hang around for at least a few months. And we hope that it provides long-term immunity. It definitely provides immunity up to a couple of months, and so it will provide at least a burst. Um, and that's the hope that it provides much longer than that. And so we won't need repeated boosters. There's obviously a lot of science that's still going to evolve as the vaccines get rolled out. Okay, another one on Twitter. I've had many vaccinations in my lifetime with no side effects until I received the Shingrix vaccine a couple of years ago. Uh, talk a bit about that and, and for that matter, other uh, potential side effects that people uh, should or shouldn't be concerned about. Sure. And so in the clinical trials, the side effects were mostly, almost all, just local stuff. And so arm swelling, some redness, some swelling, that all resolved within a couple of hours, it seems, in the clinical trial. In the UK, there was a couple of people who had an anaphylactic reaction, which is a more severe allergic reaction, and people who already had pre-existing allergies. Those were also self-resolved and got better very quickly. Um, and aren't really surprising for people who already have pre-existing allergies. And so it seems like the risk profile of this vaccine seems to be very well tolerated. Um, as we scale up and start monitoring it at the population level, we'll start to see, hope not, hopefully not, but we may see some very rare effects, and hopefully we'll keep track of those very carefully. All right, uh, Keiko emailed in to uh, ask, is there any plan, this may be perhaps a question for public health officials, but uh, do you know of any plan uh, in place for differentiating between those who receive the immunization shot and those who haven't? Like, how do you know uh, who's had it and, and who's not, who hasn't? Like right, like right now, I don't think there's a plan as to say you wear a badge or a ribbon or something to say that you've been vaccinated. Um, obviously, we want to keep track um, of who has been vaccinated so that they can get their second dose at the right time and also know at, for themselves that they've been vaccinated so they can prove that. Um, that being said, um, that system is being scaled up across the province right now. Okay, Michael wants to know, after getting yeah. vaccinated, can I return to my pre-COVID social interactions? Like, just because one person is vaccinated doesn't mean we're going to get back to our pre-COVID social interactions. I think we have some time before we feel comfortable with um, getting back to that level of talking to people in, in close quarters. 
We want to make sure as many people as possible are vaccinated. And we're not going to look at the vaccine as this um, rapid solution to all of our problems. It's going to help, obviously, but it will take time to get to a place where we feel comfortable having that pre-COVID interaction happen again. Okay, uh, here's one from uh, Peter who's called in. I'm an 83-year-old who got a flu shot and have elevated uh, a blood pressure treatment, I believe, or elevated pressure treatment on the eye. Can I get the COVID-19 vaccine? There's no reason from those descriptions that you should not get the COVID vaccine. Um, and based on the age, um, it would be a very high priority to get that. Right. And just remind us, at least with uh, the Pfizer vaccine, I think it's uh, people who are immunocompromised, uh, uh, children under 16, and I'm forgetting the other category. It's uh, primarily pregnant. children and pregnancy pregnant, okay. who are not uh, recommended to be getting it at this point. They are testing it in children and they are testing it in pregnancy. Um, and so hopefully those populations can also be um, included in vaccination campaigns. That being said, there's other vaccines also looking, being looked at by Health Canada right now. And so hopefully we'll be able to cover the entire spectrum of the population. Okay, let's get to two more really quickly. Uh, Judy called in to ask or say, I'm allergic to the stabilizer in the flu shot. What's the stabilizer in COVID-19 vaccine? Am I likely to be allergic to this one as well? Depends on what her allergy and how severe it is and whether it's, it's manageable. I think that's a conversation she has to have with her doctor and the people giving her the vaccine. It's tough for me to give any more details than that over the, over the information that I have right now. Okay, I think we've got time for uh, just one more quick one. Uh, it's from Maria. For those who have already tested positive for COVID-19, are they immune from the virus? Will they need to still get the vaccine? So that's a great question. There's lots of debate back and forth about what the best strategy is, because as we know, there's also a large number of asymptomatic people who've probably been infected. Um, and so we're not going to be able to know if they've gotten the disease before, before we start scaling up vaccination. And so it's safe. We presume it's safe. We're going to continue to give vaccine. Whether that's a priority group to get the vaccine first, it's unlikely. Um, and we'll likely target people who have not been back, who have not had the disease previously. A lot of great questions. Thank you for answering them. Dr. Murthy, we appreciate your time once again tonight. Good evening.